Welcome, Welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, friends! Welcome into the podcast. This is episode one hundred and ninety-one. So this uh, this episode reminds me of a movie my wife and I watched with some friends. Gosh, years ago at this point, it was a Cameron Diaz movie uh, called Sex Tape. Uh, it was it was pretty funny. It was worth a watch. But anyway, there's a scene in there where uh, the whole if you haven't seen it, you don't feel like seeing it. Uh, the whole premise is this this married couple made this sex tape and somehow he saved it on the cloud and it got out. Uh, which is actually a hilarious premise, but uh, there's one line in there that has stuck with me ever since. And he's the main actor. He's like, no one understands the cloud. And that made me laugh so much because I resonated with that because I don't really understand cloud stuff. And I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling like, well, I don't understand the cloud. Like what is, are the fire files just floating in the clouds, particularly when it comes to hosting and website hosting, what's the difference between cloud hosting and, you know, typical shared server hosting. Like what is the difference? How does it actually work? If you have questions, just like I had a lot of questions about this, this is your episode because I'm super excited to bring on Robert Jacoby, who is the director of WordPress at Cloudways. Cloudways, if you don't know, is one of the leaders in great hosting nowadays. It's also, I think they're just about the best when it comes to affordability for like really good products. Uh, I still use SiteGround personally, and I'm still really happy with SiteGround. You'll hear about that in this episode. Um, Like Robert and the team are not enemies with SiteGround. But I have to admit, if I was just starting out today, I would seriously look into Cloudways because they know their stuff. They have a great team. And Robert is here in this episode to share with you the difference between cloud hosting and shared hosting, and how it all works, what is right for you and your clients. And the last thing I'll say before we dive in is that Robert does a really good job of using analogies, which is really good for you to be able to explain this to clients, because clients are not going to understand hosting. You need to help them understand hosting. So this episode, I think, is not only going to be beneficial for you, but it's also going to filter down to your clients, because you're going to understand how to like use analogies and practical stories on, you know, how hosting works and what is best for you and for them. So without further ado, here is Robert. We're going to dive right in. And I do want to say for those of you who may be early on in your journey in web design, and you're just getting a a pulse on hosting, if you also want to figure out how the heck to learn web design, and you're curious about design, SEO, all the different things, I do have a free action plan for you. You can pick that up at joshhall.co slash learn. It is a free 10 step action plan. It's like a little coaching session that you and I will have. It's kind of like a guide Then I'm going to share with you the most important things you need to know to get going in web design when it comes to learning web design. And this episode is going to be a perfect complement to that. So check that out at joshhall.co slash learn to pick that up for free. And here's Robert of Cloudways. We're going to talk about understanding cloud hosting. Robert, welcome on to the podcast, man. Great to have you on. Thanks for taking some time to chat with us today. Oh, thanks so much, Josh. I really appreciate it. And i am really been looking forward to this for a while. Yeah, it's funny. We've been emailing quite a bit. Uh, so it's nice always. I, one reason I love doing the podcast is to be able to sometimes put a face to the name and actually uh, get to talk with... because. Sometimes when you email people, you get a good feel for them, but there's nothing like being able to actually, uh, well, ideally see them face to face, but Zoom is the is the next best option. So I'm really excited to, to pick your brain for a little while about hosting. Uh, obviously, you being with Cloudways, we'll talk about that, but uh, I let you know kind of early on before we went live that my audience... Uh, a lot of them are new into web design. So I kind of thought we could talk, you know, hosting 101 and then really dive into cloud hosting and the difference between that and and some and some fun tech stuff as well. So uh, before we dive in, Robert, do you want to let everybody know, uh, first off, if you wouldn't mind sharing where you're personally based out of and what do you do in your role with Cloudways? Sure. Thanks so much. Uh, I am based out of lovely Chicago. I think the greatest city in the country. Sorry to Columbus and every other city, but you're, you know. you're not far from me. I love Chicago. My wife and I, Oh my gosh, it's been, I think almost five years since we've been last, but I, I, I've said it before on the podcast. I love Chai town. I honestly can't wait to go back. We have two little girls right now, so we don't do too much traveling, but I can't wait to go back. 
Um, it's uh, and it's so funny. I mean, especially from the Ohio area, there are so many folks from Columbus, Cleveland, Cincy, all uh, you know transplants. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's only them. it's only about a five and a half, well, six hour drive for some. It's five and a half for me, but uh, we yeah, it's not that far driving wise. And shoot, we we flew last year into Chicago from Columbus, and it was like forty five minutes. So yep, yeah, no, it's great. Uh, Ohio is great. Columbus is great. I haven't been there in a while, but uh, I have to make a road trip, do an in-person podcast. I would uh, love to. <laughs> uh, to answer the second half of your question, yes, I am a director of WordPress at Cloudways. Cloudways is a uh, cloud uh, hosting platform uh, on top of services like DigitalOcean, AWS, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, who else am I missing? Oh, of course, Linode and Vulture. And mm. so we you know, provide a whole bunch of stuff on top of that. And I know we're going to get into what all that means uh, throughout the hour, but uh, that's, you know, what we do at Cloudways. I focus on the uh, WordPress business unit. So we have a couple of sort of verticals that we really try to uh, make sure, you know, we're satisfying those customers doing, you know, best of product and services for them. And yeah, my job's in the WordPress world. And what was your, I'm just kind of curious to have some context. What was your sure. experience before, um, working with Cloudways, did you do web design yourself? Or were you in a different role before getting into WordPress and that? What did that look like? So I ran an agency, a web development agency for almost 20 years. Mm. And uh, we focused on open source and the content management system, CMS, that we were uh, embedded with was uh, Joomla, which is, while it's the probably second largest open source content management system out there, it's 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 been taken over by tools like Wix, Shopify, you know, those guys. Uh, I had one, I had one Joomla experience and it, it see this like receding hairline right here. I got going on <laughs> that. That was a big part of that. I would have a little more if I didn't uh, try to build a site in Joomla, but I get, that was just my personal experience, which is why I'm so thankful for WordPress. Well, I like Joomla so much that I was president of the project uh, briefly. Mm, so, interesting. Uh, really, uh, into this open source stuff. <laughs> and look, this is actually a good distinction right away because um, I have a colleague who swears by Joomla. So maybe because I was used to WordPress, I just could not get my head around the differences. Um, or maybe I just, you know, didn't enjoy the, the experience as much, but I have heard that people who go into Joomla really like it. And I think that's really common for themes too. A lot of people in for hosting companies, whatever, whatever you, you get used to and you end up liking, and you know, that tends to be the, the one you stick with. So that's an interesting point right off the top. Yep. <laughs> um, but now I'm in WordPress world and I'm, you know, happy to talk about that transition and why, uh, and, you know, a lot of it does boil down to, you know, what's the focus on the technology? You know, how is that being, what's the ecosystem look like? And when I talk ecosystem, like you said, you know, themes, extensions, plugins, uh, hosting companies, uh, two very different worlds. And let's hit, let's just go right there, Robert, since you talked about it. What, uh, what was the impetus of the transition? What, uh, what caused you to go from Joomla into WordPress and what, what, what did that period look like for you? Uh, so I had sold off my agency and because uh, we were completely focused on the Joomla space. And Joomla was never huge in North America. Um, it, it Globally, it's got, you know, for a long time had insane adoption. Uh, one of the key uh, benefits of Joomla, besides some really geeky MVC coding things stuff, it was that it had multilingual support. Uh, mm really right out of the box um, and early on. And that, uh, based, you know, that sort of came from where a lot of the developers were uh, gotcha. working from, you know, a lot of European uh, developers, a lot of uh, Europeans in open source. And it was just one of those things where you had to have German and English. You had to have French and English, Italian and English. And, you know, WordPress, well, technically still lags in that in a lot of ways. I mean, you have wonderful plugins like Weglot that, uh, you know, try to make that a bit easier. And Matt Mullenweg talked about uh, at the state of the word at the end of uh, 2021, that having multilingual support is high on the roadmap. Um, but, you know, some of these things, you know, like with lots of projects, some focus on one thing, some focus on another, and you take advantage of what makes the most sense. So that was that trend. So 
our agency was a Juma shop. Got to get back to the question because I can ramble on all day long. I've been up oh, for Oh, you're welcome on this podcast. <laughs> everyone, everyone listening is used to that. <laughs> um, and actually jumped into a hybrid startup that did Joomla and WordPress plugins. Mm, okay. And uh, uh, within two years, we were acquired by WP Engine. And then I was like, this WordPress stuff is really great. I mean, the software mm. had, you know, from when I really had evaluated it and looked at it and take, you know, try to take it seriously. Um, it had the software and ecosystem had really taken off and, uh, th there's a lot more functionality, a lot more, uh, companies doing really cool stuff, you know, integrating SaaS solutions in conjunction with WordPress. So what may be missing in core was being augmented and supplemented by, you know, all sorts of plugins and third party providers. Sure. So, you know, and, uh, certainly the hosting ecosystem, was huge around it, you know, you know, it's not, I don't know the exact number, but let's just pretend that it's, you know, WordPress is about 50% of the uh, internet uh, net at the moment. So I mean, there, there's I was wondering what the the recent stats were. Yeah. I it's, haven't looked in a little while. It's somewhere, I think it technically it's, I think it's 43%, but you know, uh, that's huge. <laughs> I, so, wild. If, you're, if you're in any double digits on the, you know, owning this portion of the internet, that's crazily huge. So yeah. um, th there's just a lot more investment, a lot more, uh, uh, lot more community, a lot more, um, uh, oh, there's a word I'm looking for, um, a lot more movement. I'm, I'm not, it's not the yeah. one word I'm looking for, but there are so many people with so many great ideas around what you can do with WordPress. That, innovation, uh, maybe? Innovation, thank you. Boy. <laughs> I mean, look, here people come to me, Robert, for fancy words like innovation. That's what I'm here for. So, hey, I, I always use uh, the excuse that English is my second language. So I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> it's code for, <laughs> yeah. No, that it's a good distinction, though. And, and that's why, like, I think for people, again, most, most everyone listening uses WordPress. So there's some other awesome, you know, platforms out there as well. But um, I have seen it even just from my experience really morph and grow into what it has become. I, I first heard about it in 2010 and I was like, cause I was just building static HTML, CSS sites initially. And I just heard about this WordPress thing and I thought it was just a blog. I just thought it was like a weird text editor for a blog. And I really didn't pay enough attention to it until a couple of years later when everyone started talking about it. And then a lot of clients said they heard they should use WordPress. And I was like, maybe, maybe I should learn WordPress. And that's definitely how it started for me. And to your point, I know we'll segue to hosting here, the hosting landscape. I mean, how, I guess here's a question. How has the growth of WordPress affected the hosting landscape? I mean, have hosts had to make WordPress their top priority or a big priority? What is What have you seen in that? Oh, definitely have seen large hosting companies make huge changes in their teams and in their infrastructure and in their outlook with regards to WordPress. Uh, you know, there are a bunch more recent ones, and then you have sort of almost the old school original ones. I mean, you have uh, Automatic has its own WP VIP platform for enterprise WordPress. And then, you know, sort of that, that second tier of people who started up, you have WP engine, you have uh, pagely, which is now owned by GoDaddy. Um, oh, I didn't uh, know that. Oh yeah. Pagely was acquired. Okay. Uh, was it last month? I think it came mm. out um, in the last four to six weeks, uh, which would be great. Cause who knows when this will be uh, broadcast? So the time frame will be very confusing. Uh, yeah, end of, yeah, uh, yeah. End of twenty one, uh, early twenty two. Uh, the announcement of Page being acquired by GoDaddy. Uh, gotcha. DreamHost uh, was another early adopter of, of WordPress, and so that's sort of that. I look at that as a second tier, and then you had companies like Endurance slash Bluehost, uh, uh, which were in a completely different space and have also, you know, sort of. Uh, retrofitted their infrastructure, their teams, their support um, mm. all around that. So you have, that's a great way to put it retrofitted their support and team around it. That's a really good way. I know um, when I started the first hosting company, I started doing uh, or hosting clients with and stuff was Bluehost mainly because they had a like WordPress specific line of tools and functions and stuff like that. I actually host with SiteGround um, right now, but yeah, Bluehost, I remember oh, when I, 
But yeah, I, fi- I figured, I figured you'd do some convincing for me. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, that was a big, that was a biggie because host that host really, you know, displayed that. I think a lot of hosts of hosting companies now, even at Cloudways, I was looking at your homepage right now. Um, at the time of recording this, you really, you can kind of pick what tools you use and then that you guys have the solutions laid out there, which I think is really important. Um, so there's a lot of interesting distinctions already here, Robert, between WordPress and Joomla and some of these other ones and um, some different hosts and what's what the landscape has looked like. Let's kick off with this question here. Um, the different type of hosting. And for the folks who are new to web design, this is super confusing. I'm I'm by no means, this is not my area of expertise to say the least. So it's one reason I'm excited to have you on to you know shed some light as to what's going on. But for the folks who are, are fairly new to web design and they don't know the difference between cloud hosting and all the different type of hosting there is, would you like to maybe just explain that? Just kind of give us like a 101 of the difference between cloud hosting and what it is? My pleasure. So uh, even though I was in the agency space running one for, you know, almost two decades, uh, we did our own hosting uh, way back in the early aughts. And when we hosted someone, it was we got a server, we got, a, you know, installed everything on there. And that was that client's host. And we put it into a rack in a room somewhere. Um, so literally, like, you got a cert, like you got a server. It wasn't like oh, you're, you, you know, you pick your server wherever it is in the world. It's like you, no, server room, was, whole- you know, in a closet somewhere with some good ventilation and a lot of cabling. Um, wow. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, you know, we're talking 20, 25 years ago, you know, that kind of world of hosting where, you know, everyone just sort of had a dedicated box. Technology and software has obviously changed a million fold since then. And, you know, that the next big step was, you know, platforms that, you know, created sort of multi-tenant, multi-user hosting. We call that shared hosting. So that one box that I had in my closet now is a box somewhere at a hosting company. And they've put software on top of it. Typically, for the last, you know, 20 years, you would see, you know, like WHMCS, cPanel, Plesk as sort of that friendly user facing layer. But, you know, you'd say I'm going to spend 20 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, 1000 bucks a month. And you'd have one or more real servers where uh, you're sort of partitioning one or more uh, customers, websites, web applications on them. So that's that short sort of shared hosting world. And it goes even a little further in that the hosting company itself would then be the manager of all that. So sort of that right. pure shared hosting is my customers are on the same server with your customers and another customer and uh, w- which made it very affordable to like crazily affordable. I mean, you'd see starting prices. I mean, SiteGround's a perfect example. They were a leader in shared hosting uh, because they would, you know, kick off, you know, first year deals for like, a few dollars for the whole year of hosting and you have shared hosting and you're on, you know, some infrastructure that's being shared by another, you know, 50, hundred people, depending on how powerful the, uh, um, bare metal was, uh, mm. that's our little fun term for the actual hardware. Mm. So, you know, depending on how, you know, powerful the bare metal was, you have X amount of, you know, sites and traffic. One of the, you know, the problems that comes up with shared hosting is that one bad tenant in that environment can take down everyone. So, you know, if you have, if you're on a, a server with, with a bad tenant that all of a sudden spikes on CPU utilization, they've put it mm-hmm. on a PHP application that uh, goes into an infinite loop and recursive database madness, blah, 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 blah. Well, that'll slow down the experience for everyone else in that box. Um, so there, I mean, there are pros to shared hosting. It could be dirt cheap. The cons are that it, it's hard to prevent someone else from causing you, uh, harm. And That's a it, good point. That's a really good point. It's funny. You mentioned the, uh, the, 
the verbiage of a tenant because I had one of my good colleagues who I consider a total email and DNS expert. And he uses the same type of analogy with, with shared hosting particularly when it comes to email and how like if one site on that shared hosting environment gets hacked or has any sort of complication, it can literally affect other, all the other sites well, in that same apartment table. complex. Yeah, it's, a, it's an apartment complex analogy. I mean, it's a, with the email, you know, you have because you have a still a static IP address. And if, if, if email is coming out of someone else's some other tenants uh, apartment that is getting uh, blocked or, you know, banned or uh, marked as spam, uh, then everyone at that IP address uh, suffers the same penalty. You know, it's like, yeah. well, you know, so and so just, you know, you know, push an elephant down the you know garbage chute, and now no one can use the garbage chute. Uh, so that's kind of that. That's that problem with shared hosting. It, it it's a great way to you know as ent- super entry level. It is you're not going to find anything more uh, affordable. Uh, but your needs and requirements might be significantly different. Like you can't go down, or you can't you know mm. you can't slow down and whatnot. So. You know, a lot of people have taken advantage of it, especially for, you know, whether you call it a vanity vanity site or, you know, uh, if I want to throw my resume up somewhere. Uh, sure, like a brochure site or something. Brochure site, yeah. you know, some kind of yellow pages, shingle, that kind of thing. You know, those typically, you know, you're not going to find something much cheaper these days. Uh, but you have to realize that the, there's uncertainty in that. Sure. So that's sort of, that's sort of the next next step. So everyone went through having bare metal, they were, you know, running them out of their own offices, then out of, you know, data centers, uh, but that's a lot of upkeep. Uh, you know, let's, let's, let's shift all that uh, responsibility, liability, um, expertise to hosting companies. Hosting companies get their own metal, uh, they start with shared hosting. And, of course, they w- are happy to also, you know, put up your own individual boxes. I mean, at one point when we were, when I had the agency, you know, we went from managing boxes in our data center. Um, those are big giant air quotes for anyone. Yeah. For anyone just watching. listening, data center, AKA basement or closet or something. Right. <laughs> you know, it, you know, it may have been sitting in a rack like four feet away from my desk, but that's besides the point. Um, but, you know, those were the days you did what you had to do to get it online. And then you moved it to yeah. a data center where it's like, oh, uninterrupted power. That's amazing. Mm. You know, you know, so so if if the next Chicago winter blizzard comes through and knocks everything out, there's a generator and that's going to keep the lights on and the server is going to keep going. You know, amazing stuff, you know, better Internet connectivity. You know, how close are you to main access points, things like that for better performance, speed, all that fun stuff. So hosts would start putting servers in there, bare metal in there, and then start really looking at how to uh, sort of bundle all that infrastructure into more useful platforms. Mm. And and we you know sort of have two. Yes, I'm doing a little pointy dance here um, with two fingers. Uh, two uh, different themes that converge in and out. Uh, in multiple ways. So you, you start getting more managed hosting. Mm. And managed hosting is can apply to different types of hosting situations, but it's really that the hosting company is doing all the IT work for you. Gotcha. So again, you know, if we go back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they're the ones who are going to set up the box. You know, they're going to make sure that the lights are on. They're going to shell into, you know, Linux and tweak things and whatnot. Uh, and at the same time, you see, you know, sort of the birth of uh, the cloud. You know, it's the, the cloud is actually... so much fancier and, and pretty than it really is. You know, it's like knowing how the sausage is made. Uh, yeah. But, the cloud is a uh, is a software layer across within a data center and across data centers uh, with at the end of the day physical hardware uh, running uh, you know websites and software solutions. So the secret's out, Robert. You just let the world know that the cloud our website files are literally not in the clouds. Actually, it's just a 
a fancy way to say it's spread across different data centers and stuff. Is that, is that the, the layman's term to say that? Yeah, it's, it's really boring. I mean, it's, it cloud is such a wonderful term because it, it, it uh, implies that it's everywhere all the time. Yeah. It, well, it's not, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's still sitting on some kind of hard drive with some kind of RAM, with some kind of CPU in someone's closet. Well, okay. That closet may have, you know, right. raised floors. It's never going to flood. Uh-huh. It's got, you know, uh, oh my gosh, what's it called? Uh, you know, different types of fire suppression that, you know, won't affect the hardware. So if, you know, one server blows up, everything else st- still keeps running, you know, redundant, mm, yeah. network, redundant network connections, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's, st- you know, at the end of the day, it, you know, it's still a, you know, some kind of, you know, beige box. Still something. Yeah. And look, this is important though, because yeah, it might be boring, but maybe not for you, Robert, but for the average web designer, this is the, you know, this is the boring tech stuff, but it's important. It's really important because all the marketing in the world, all the social media, all the traffic, all the SEO, all the website optimization, all the conversion tips, all of that goes to your website and what is holding your website together and what's it on. The foundation is the hosting. So it it might be boring, but I just want to articulate this for everyone listening and watching. This is super important. So it's so (laughs) important. I mean, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here, but I, I just want to let everyone know and, and to relay this to clients, you need to tell them how important this is. You can do everything and like you can build the most amazing house, but if you build it on quicksand, it's not going to end well. Same thing with hosting. If you get a super cheap shared hosting environment that is not going to support you well, it's, it's bad news. But I, it's interesting how you kind of guided us through the evolution of hosting. Essentially there, Robert, it was the, Wait, the actual not, little. Okay, uh, sir, I, sir. I, I'm not done because we. Oh, have, no, you're fine. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of visualize that because and I, I do want to ask about the difference between managed and cloud. But please go ahead. Let's let's keep on going with that. And, and uh, sort of the, the, the last bit or. Uh, uh, there's two more big breakthroughs in hosting over the last 10 years, 15 years. Um, y- you get something called a, a VPS, a virtual private server. So when we talked about shared hosting back in the early aughts, uh, you know, there was conflicts. You have to worry about CPU utilization, all that kind of uh, tech stuff. Uh, then, then we got into something called a, a virtual private server. So a single box, single hardware box, however you want to picture that. Um, I'm old enough to think of them as beige boxes. Um, Now can run X amount of sort of full servers in software on that hardware. And uh, what made that really important is that at the top level, you you could tell the box that if you have four, you know, virtual private servers on some hardware, you could say each one is, you know, can max out at 25% of all the resources. So by use, utilizing a VPS, you knew exactly what you're going to get on the hardware side. And the best part is there would be no collision or, you know, tenant mischief uh, on that box because that VPS, that, you know, VPS number three could only max out at so much and it would never affect VPS one or two or four. So th- that kind of, it, it's, it's like super shared hosting on steroids. You know, you, you know, it's, you can still partition a box out some specific hardware out, but you can also guarantee uh, a level of resources and the fact that that is not going to go down. And so a couple companies did that and made that happen. Josh, you are on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right. my, I'm so sorry. I was talking. I'm glad you mentioned that. I, uh, my daughter was running across and I heard her in the background. So I muted. Uh, I was just going to say, is that what a lot of hosting companies are essentially promoting when they say it's shared, but it's like, it's more pri- It's like private or managed shared hosting. Is, is that essentially what that is? So in my mind, managed means that someone is doing a lot of work for you, uh, a VPS can be managed or unmanaged. So you could get gotcha. a VPS from someplace and you still have to be, you know, that sys admin that understands Linux. Or you can get uh, a managed version of that where a lot of the IT work is offloaded to the hosting company. Yep, gotcha. And then the, the, sort of the, the, the final point in that, in this trajectory of hosting is um, containers. 
So containers are like VPSs on steroids that are portable. Um, you can move them across different types of hosting providers, uh, different cloud services, and you know a container can also, no pun intended, contain uh, aspects of uh, what's expected from the hardware. Mm. So you can take, it's, it's a portable VPS, let's put it that way. So now you have your VPS, but now it's become, a container is more of a portable uh, server solution. And does that give the hosting company more control as well? If something is literally contained as far as well, resources, all the, all the stuff. So what, what you can do, what's cool with containers is that you can, uh, secretly behind the scenes, start moving them around, uh, for scalability and flexibility reasons, mm. because a container is not necessarily tied to a specific piece of hardware where a VPS is the container is now a portable VPS where you know you can start oh okay this this box is too slow let's 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 move this container over to you know someplace else and you know make that uh, on a faster server so it, it's, okay. it's, 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 it's an encapsulated architecture uh, and the geekiness of that escapes me as well but I understand it well enough to know that they're they're portable and uh, you, you can really take advantage of uh, behind the scenes uh, optimizations that you couldn't with a traditional VPS. So we've covered a lot of the different types of servers and hosting. I'm still honestly a little fuzzy about what cloud, how cloud hosting is either different or is it essentially kind of a, a an umbrella term for virtual private servers or managed or shared? Like, are all these other terms that you just talked about, Robert, can they fit inside cloud hosting? Um, help, help me understand the, the difference between cloud hosting versus some of these. And I know it's, it is an intricate topic, but uh, this is really important because a lot of people go to sign up for hosting and, and myself included over the past several years has been like, is it worth it to, to upgrade to cloud or VPS or like, what is the true difference and how do these all work together or how are they different? There, there, there's, and I'm probably guilty of it as well, but th there's a lot of marketing voodoo around what is managed, what is cloud and, and there, there, there is no like uh, uh, specific definition. Okay. I mean, you know, there, there's no like uh, I triple E uh, 15 digits dot 14 digits, you know, specification for cloud. What I think of is, I'm just going to go with what I think of cloud. Perfect. And I think most people are going to be within, you know, uh, a, a delta of 5% to this. Is that uh, cloud has multiple geographical locations of actual data centers that uh, data can be replicated or run from one or more of these data centers at the same time. Uh, so that, you know, if, you know, Amazon East goes down, Amazon Asia takes over or, gotcha. or there is a redundancy um, in almost real time of data across databases so that folks in Asia have uh, just as fast performance or uh, the least amount of lag to get to that host as they would in Europe. So, you know, that the cl cloud is really about making as much of the data re as redundant and fast as possible globally. That's very well said. Is it, well, how does, a uh, follow-up question to that, how does cloud hosting differ from a content delivery network? Or is it very similar? Um, uh, like if you're going to get a CDN, do you use that in conjunction with cloud hosting or does cloud hosting take care of that automatically? The, uh, CDNs are hyper-specialized clouds. I okay. Mean, that's, that's really what, the, what it is. So, uh, you know, they're not necessarily worried about as real time data, because a lot of CDNs, I mean, primarily support just static data. So images, um, documents, static pages and all that. And those can be replicated to umpteen different geographic locations. So that means they're redundant there, you know, there, there's uh, backup and, uh, um, you know, least amount of lag. So a CDN sure. is very specialized in what it's doing with a type of content on the cloud. Gotcha. 
that's the way to look at it. So if I'm only, you know, a great example, say I just want to run one site. I only want to pay for one location, one geographic hosting company or data center. That's where I'm putting all my stuff. I can take advantage of a CDN to offload a lot of the static media content globally for a significantly lower price because really it's just a hard it's really just a hard drive with an ip address at the end of the day and okay and that's what cdns are so you know if i have a bunch of pdfs that i need to make sure people can get i can you know take advantage of significantly uh, lower costs but also uh, reduce latency for uh, customers all over the world by having that content all those pdfs replicated uh, throughout the CDN. Gotcha. And then for, for folks who are, are maybe new to web design, who are wondering exactly what well, you talked about right there, what a CDN is, but I, you do find this practically like sometimes because I am a web design coach and I coach students all over the world. Sometimes when I view their sites, um, if somebody is in Brazil or in like South Africa or something, it will often load slower for me in Columbus, Ohio, because they, if they're not using a CDN or cloud hosting, because it literally takes longer and in a different location, if their, if their website is hosted on a server in South Africa, say it will literally take longer for me to pull it up is, I mean, that's kind of the, that's probably the most practical example of that. Right. Robert, it literally just takes you longer to load it if you're farther away in the world. Correct. And the, and the, the funny part is, uh, utilizing a CDN, uh, you can make you can still have a really slow host at the origin location, but because all that other stuff, all those other media assets, static assets are spread out across a, a CDN, you can infinitely improve the speed of your website even if you're on a really slow local host, mm. because all that data will just get to you faster. And gotcha. You know, and, and the way the internet's set up, you know something somewhere what don't care where it is just give it to me as fast as you can and yeah that's what to take advantage of gotcha so with cloudways um the name is in your the company name is are you do you guys have shared as well and i'm just playing devil's advocate for folks who maybe don't know you um what are you guys focusing on and is it again is it shared and private and cloud is it all the above what's that look like for cloudways specifically so uh, we don't do any shared hosting. Gotcha. Uh, uh, and, and in fact, a lot of the traditional stuff I just went over, uh, Cloudways has kind of been at the leading edge of that in the fact that we, we are a, a, a management platform across all this kind of bare metal. So you know, we're, we're a management platform on top of uh, AWS, Google, DigitalOcean, uh, Linode, and Vulture. So we uh, take advantage of all their bare metal, their cloud data centers and all that uh, without having to maintain our own hardware, which is a very nice thing, but also making it really easy to use, uh, really easy to take advantage of all those other you know, cloud platforms that are you know, embedded with all the hardware and data centers and electricity and all that. Um, you know, there is no shared hosting, uh, out of the box as an agency, you can create your own shared hosting environment. So, you, you know, there, there gotcha. are, so if, if you sign up for, you know, a, a $12 a month premium digital ocean package and all, you know, you have 100 clients that all have, you know, tiny static websites. Yeah. You can put all 100 on them for, you know, $12 a month. And that's, gotcha. you know, that's all money back to you, depending on how you charge back from maintenance, support and hosting. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have, and one- that w- would that be considered like getting a container essentially through yeah. Cloudways? Like you get your yeah. container, you have all your sites, but you're, that's your container. You're not in an apartment complex with some scary neighbors who are going to be up to no good at three in the morning. You got your own container on its, you know, that you so have all it, your it, assets in. And, and, and DigitalOcean speak, you, you have your droplet. So you, you get a DigitalOcean droplet, uh, which is a container in, in DigitalOcean speak for all gotcha. intents and purposes. Uh, so you can manage that container in a bunch of different ways. You can uh, scale it up if you want. Um, you can manage you know, the resources and you know, other software bits for all the applications within that. Uh, with, you know, we, we have servers and applications within that server. Uh, the, the cool part is if you 
ever really need to like crazily scale up. So maybe uh, one of the providers just, you know, doesn't have the right locations, doesn't have the, you know, the performance metrics for that uh, container. You, you can switch from DigitalOcean to AWS, you know, at the click of a button. So, you, you know, we, our platform also provides all this flexibility to move back and forth between different providers, depending on your needs. And let's uh, let's hit on that too right now since we're there, Robert. So the different providers you're talking DigitalOcean, and AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, Linode. These are there's Google Cloud. Um, these are all data centers essentially, right? That you could. How does this work? Are these basically gas stations for the internet? Is that the best way? Like uh, I'm trying to. I'm just. I'm a. <laughs> I'm a simple dude who needs like very. Uh, I don't know if you watched The Office, but my wife and I just watched the episode last night where Michael's like, talk to me like I'm an eight year old. So this is what I this is what I need as a as a, it, it, you know, with my level of experience with hosting. So I like if, to simplify if, it. If I remember that episode, he says, talk to me like an eight year old and then talk to me like I'm younger. Yeah. And then he's like, OK, now talk to me like I'm five. So now that's me. I'm like, all right, Robert, now talk to me like I'm five. Tell me as a five year old mind here with hosting the difference. You know, what's a data center? And, and I guess one question I have is like anyone can access these different data centers technically. Right. Do you guys as a host have like special access to all these as far as how you use them as your data? Like, I'm really curious about that. Uh, boy, there's a bunch of questions in that. Let me. Sorry, yeah. that was like three questions in one. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer the last one first because that's the one I can remember. Um, you know, you can go to AWS, Amazon. I just call it AWS these days, but Amazon Web Services. Thanks for expanding on the uh, acronym, um, or or Google Cloud or digital. You can go to all these folks directly. So, you know, if, if you're uh, a, a, a restaurant and you want, you know chicken you can go to a bunch of places to get chicken and there's going to be different reasons for why some chicken is better than another maybe some some of that chicken comes you know in on time maybe some of that i should maybe uh switch it to tomatoes for the vegetarians in the audience uh tomatoes we're gonna go with tomatoes <laughs> let's go pizza and make everyone happy that way we could do meat or veggie <laughs> But you, you, you need the ingredients to run your business. Sure. And there are different places to get it, and there's different reasons to get it. Some are closer, some are fresher, uh, you know, some are uh, more uh, price sensitive, you know, all those kinds of things uh, that, that go into it. Um, you're going to pick one, and you're going to, you know, be like, okay, we're going to make pizza with these tomatoes because, you know, they, they sort of solve that Venn diagram of timeliness, uh, cost consciousness and uh, quality. And that's what these hosting providers are. You okay. can't, you, you are what these uh, data centers, about, yeah. data yeah. centers are all about. You can go directly to one and instead of being a pizza provider, you can just become another, you know, a, a tomato distributor and just go straight to AWS and build everything on top of that. And you're only going to have AWS tomatoes. And I'm loving this analogy. I'm going to reuse this. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we're doing this episode before lunchtime too. Uh, <laughs> but it's a lot harder to, the, the, the whole effort is very difficult. Um, yeah. And especially from like that web design space. I've been there. I know it. Not yeah. everyone's going to be hyper geeky and technical and really want to get into the weeds and figure out, wait a minute. Exactly. What kind of EC2? Wait, what is EC2? And even, I mean, I, God forbid, the DIYers and the clients who sign up for hosting, oh yeah. but even as web designers, like I am not going to be able to speak at that level. I mean, I can talk at you know some level with some tech speak, but yeah, if it's like computer related, RAM, CPU, all that stuff, that is over my head. And I just, I don't have too much interest in that. So I, that's where Cloudways and, you know, I guess, would you, are you essentially the managed Hosts that is the immediate, the intermediary, excuse me, intermediary between these data centers and the client or the web designer. So we abstract all the technologies and, and just make them a lot easier to use. Gotcha. So, you know, we're at the end of the day, Cloudways is a software company that looks for the best solutions, you know, for us to provide back to agencies, freelancers, and whatnot. Mm. Um, Hardware is commoditized. I mean, you, you can, you know, if you want a thousand CPUs of anything, you know, everyone's going to pay the same price for them. So, you know, 
so what? So what makes you different? And and the value, and to your point exactly, is yes, you, you don't want to learn about all this uh, super nitty-gritty technical stuff, but also is that really what would make your time valuable? I mean, if you're a designer, right. an agency, a content creator, uh, not only is this, what you're doing, what you like, but you're also going to make money off of it. You know, I have yeah. found that if you need to do something that you're not interested in, you're going to spend two to three times as much time trying to get it done. Not, That's a great not point. That, you know, love you. Not that you couldn't do this, Josh, but you really want to spend a whole day, you know, setting up a, a, a an AWS server when you can get it, you know, rolled out in, you know, five minutes. I am not ashamed in saying I have zero interest in doing that. And even like I, I'm really good with CSS, but coding is not my strong suit. I don't know any other type of coding, a little bit of PHP, but that's it. And it did. Your point was completely articulated by my experience as a web designer. It took me three times as long to code as a lot of my colleagues, just because I did, it just wasn't, it wasn't natural for me. I didn't, I, I didn't love it. However, design, copy, conversion, sales strategy, those things came much more natural to me. So I think that's, that's a great way to articulate the value of, of what you guys are doing with Cloudways. And sounds like what I'm sure a lot of other companies are doing as well with being that managed partner between all the scary tech tools and data centers and all that stuff. And then we, you know, the end product. And I don't want to say it's scary, but it's, you know, there's value. And are you as a designer or, you know, a design focused content focused agency going to be able to recoup all that cost for getting stuff done. I mean, if if you can charge X amount per hour for a project or, you know, a, some project-based thing, but you're going to have to spend 10 times as much time doing the uh, technical stuff while well, you're, you're eating your own lunch there and it's not yeah. a good thing. And yeah, so, I mean, th that's why solutions like Cloudways exist to, to make the cloud accessible to everyone. And I guess... And I say scary because to me and, and a lot of web designers who don't have an interest in this area, it is scary mainly because we just don't know. Anything you don't know is generally a little more frightening. Um, now, I remember when I used to manually transfer websites in the beginning, that was terrifying for me because I broke websites and I broke email because I didn't understand. Uh, now, I know enough when it comes to transferring a website that I can transfer a website, lickety, lickety split, no emails goes down because I understand cPanel or PHP my admin, the, the records, which I do have a, a basic beginner's course on that. If anyone's interested, it's my cPanel course that goes through. Although I actually want to talk about cPanel too. Um, that course actually really isn't even around cPanel. It's about all those different tools within all hosting platforms, but um, maybe we'll go there next. But I say that to say this stuff is scary if you don't know it or at least know the, the basics of it. But this already, honestly, Robert is making, this is really like visualizing how all this fits together now for me. So I hope it is for everyone else too, because I still up to this conversation didn't quite understand the difference between shared cloud, BPS managed, the container, all that stuff. But this is definitely providing me some clarity. Um, while we're on the cPanel topic, what is cPanel? And I know like I use SiteGround still, um, unless you convince me otherwise by the end of this call here. Um, they recently have a new backend, so it's not actually cPanel. Um, can you tell us about that? What have you seen with that? What is cPanel versus these other site builder tool or these other you know hosting tools? So uh, for the longest time, and and it's, and it's funny. There's there's sort of a, a quick brief history of web host paneling panels. Um, very. At, at very similar times, uh, a product called cPanel was created in North America, um, as well as a product in Europe called Plesk. They were both just giant bits of software that facilitated management of hardware and software on that hardware. So it, it, there are ways to make some of your life easier. Because way back in the 90s and aughts, when you wanted to update email records or DNS records or, you know, Apache uh, uh, parameters, you would have to shell into your box, 
type. Well, and I, and th- this will this will be a high geek factor. Um, my preferred uh, Linux editor is Vim. So mm. you know, you type in vi uh, apache dot conf and uh, go in, start tweaking things about you know resources and utilization and processes and cycles. So you know, you really had to be comfortable dealing with the operating system at its base level and knowing how to reboot services. Uh, like Apache, like MySQL, like Postgres, uh, which now we have Nginx and Lightspeed and, you know, uh, MariaDB and all other stuff. But um, going in there and just, you know, you know, putting on your helmet and messing around directly with the code. cPanel plus the, the two biggest ones that came out in the last 15 years uh, were built to abstract all that scary stuff. Yeah. So now it would say, you know, turn on web server, turn off web server. You didn't have to worry about, you know, dot slash a, you know, oh. HTTPD uh, space slash restart or something. Yeah, I don't, oh, I don't even remember if I've done, done some of that. I'm stuff. just imagining like uh, Nedry and Jurassic Park, just seeing code and then just typing in the functions and stuff. That's I, is that that's basically what, that's what it looked exactly like. What it was it. That's exactly wow. what it was. And so cPanel and Plus came on board to abstract that stuff and make it user friendly, like gotcha. all tools eventually uh, uh, lead yeah. to. Um, and then added other things like, okay, you want email on there? You can kind of one click email and type in some stuff, but you don't need to know about the coding and you know the IT aspects of it. So those you know web hosting panels uh, were created, and a lot of hosting companies took advantage of them because it made their clients' lives easier. Mm, yeah. The, you know, there are pros and cons to, oh, and both those companies now are owned by the same parent company. Make that short. So cPanel and Plesk are owned by uh, the same parent company, and they kind of run that world now. Um, What's that company, by the way? Oh, my, you know, I really, uh, is it Web Pros? I think it's Web Okay, Pros. I just, yeah, I wasn't sure. I. It, it's gone through a couple of rounds of uh, changing lead investors and all that. Okay. Uh, the last I was two. never on the cPanel newsletter, so <laughs> I don't keep oh, up too much had with that. Great conferences, though. I, I love the cPanel conferences. Oh, did they really? Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I, 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 tons of great people there. Tons of great people. I mean, what's what's fun? This is a total tangent, but you know, you said we have time to go on tangents, so I will. Oh yeah, uh, it's a good time. So many cool, awesome, geeky people at all these companies. And, uh, you know, there's there's business stuff that happens. But, you know, I, I don't got a bad I don't have a bad thing to say about the people working at these companies. Uh, they were yeah. really invested, still are invested in, you know, making cool technology that makes people lives easier. People's well, it's the same lives. thing. It's the same thing like with WordCamps and and uh, I'm not sure if Joomla had a community, but yeah, the the online web design community as a whole and, and further into development communities, it's awesome when everyone gets together because you go to WordCamp, like if you talk about WordPress around your family, they're like, so you can fix my computer? Uh, you're like, no, <laughs> but you go to WordCamp, you can talk about, you know, uh, PHP, my admin problems and people are like, oh, dude, I totally understand. So that's funny. Oh, I, yeah. And yeah. Great! I forgot about PHP My Admin. I haven't actually used that in forever uh, myself. Oh, really? Because um, all the stuff keeps getting abstracted. It's like, well, mm-hmm. why do I need to dig in there? You know, if I now, need to see dig here, in there, that means I screwed up something big. Yeah, right, right. So I would do that with a manual uh, migration of a of a WordPress website. But here's my question on that: PHP My Admin, for example, just like File Manager or you know any of these entry points to all this uh, WordPress website stuff. Those are still in the new backend of like SiteGround. So SiteGround is not using CPL anymore, but they still have these categories of things you can drill into that were in cPanel. So can you sure. explain that to me? Or it was I guess you already did. CPanel was the way to just kind of wrap all that up together and make it more user friendly to adjust and access, right? So th- th- there are a couple of things that happened, um, and this is kind of like what's the uh, something baseball? What's the phrase? Um, I don't know. Do you have a Do you have a hockey analogy? I can. I'm more of a hockey guy. Oh boy! Uh, now we're both really in trouble. I don't even know baseball that well, so I'm trying. To- <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I, I thought being in Chicago, you had to know hockey, baseball, and football pretty well, but maybe maybe uh, that's not the case. Well, you gotta know. <laughs> 
you need to know how to spell all those. Uh, that's about, that's about it. <laughs> gotcha. Um, uh, but so one of the uh, that, that are both technological and business issues around sort of uh, cPanel plus uh, web panels, and that's you know they're built to be as generic as possible, so as many hosts can take advantage of them. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, th there's stuff that hosts may not want. There's, you know, how do we tweak this? How do we make this more, you know, how do we white label it more? You know, for a long time, having cPanel meant something. Now people are like, well, no one cares whether you have cPanel. They care whether XYZ is happening. And yeah. uh, to new users, cPanel and Plesk mean, I feel, less than they did, you know, 15 years ago. And it's like, oh my God, you have to have this because it solves so many problems. Even and, the past couple years, that narrative has changed dramatically, I feel like. Well, and then the other reason is because certainly on the cPanel side, I won't speak for Plesk on this, uh, a lot of price increases and, and, and the way the price pricing model has changed for cPanel in regards to the hosting companies. Gotcha. Uh, so on the whole, a lot of hosting companies have had to pay more. I see. And they were like, well, if we have to pay more and a lot of this, you know, we know what solutions our customers want. We don't need to give them everything because they only want these three, four, five things. You know, we, we can invest in that over the course of a year or two and, you know, get rid, stop licensing, you know, cPanel or Plesk and we'll be better off. You know, they've taken a, a, a multi year approach to it and being like, okay, you know, our customers need XYZ. We can build that out, you know, over the course of twelve to eighteen months, and gotcha. then we and then we can control the entire architecture. Mm, yeah, you know, Cloudways is a perfect example. We don't. There is no cPanel or Plesk. We have our own web hosting platform. There is a number of reasons for that. One, because we want that platform to be accessible, usable, and scalable across, you know, our five infrastructure uh, partners. So we needed to have a consistent way to. Look at you know whether you're on AWS or DigitalOcean, uh, but also have tools that connected specifically with those. So if I wanted to migrate my DigitalOcean WordPress website to an AWS instance, um, I could do that easily. And you know gotcha. we had very specific technical reasons for building our own platform, but also you know it's the Cloudways experience too. And yeah. for traditional cPanel Plesk uh, users, you know they want to be known as SiteGround or Bluehost, not Bluehost with cPanel. Or gotcha. Panel. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I do. I have a question. I'll save it a little bit because I want to get your thoughts on. Because I want to rename that course because it's what I teach in my cPanel course is is much more than just cPanel. It's all the most important aspects of records and file manager and and how databases work with WordPress, the site, all that stuff, all that kind of stuff. Before that, though, I want to give you an opportunity, Robert to challenge me on SiteGround. I've been using SiteGround since 2015 and I am a ain't broke, don't fix it kind of guy. My site's never been down. I never have any issue. I, knocking on wood, I never have any issues. I've never had client, yeah, never had students say there's issues with the site. Um, but I wanna give you the chance to tell me, and you can speak completely freely on this. I don't, I, I'm an affiliate for SiteGround, but I don't have any personal friends there. So I'm not, my feelings aren't gonna be hurt. Um, maybe even if it's site ground or just other hosts in general, what is the, what is the difference between Cloudways and a site ground or some of the other com companies that are, are similar? Um, so unlike you, I do have personal friends there. I know the founder of uh, site ground, uh, okay. have, have shared, uh, at, at least one or 200 drinks with him. Um, and you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It, you know, that is a good rule. And I, I'm not going to sit here and tell anyone that if you are completely satisfied with a solution that you should move to anywhere else. If it's working for you and you're happy with the price point and performance and, and support, good. I mean, that, that's the beauty of, you know, a lot of the Internet stuff is you do have a lot of choices. And, you know, if you found one that totally works, that's awesome. Uh, you know, off the bat, the, you know, really the biggest differentiator we're going to have – uh, just from the start is you can deploy pretty much anywhere in the world with Cloudways. You can't do it with SiteGround. They have dedicated mm -hmm. data centers. And uh, I mean, last I checked, I think they have three. 
I mean, if we yeah, I think it's she, she, one's in Chicago. Um, is it Chicago? There's Europe. Yeah, know, somewhere in Europe. And there might be one or two in Europe. I don't know. There's definitely one, obviously. Could be so like Singapore or something, maybe, or something like so, that. Yeah. So it's, a, I mean, but if I add up all the data centers we have, you know, just off the top of my head, we're, you know, 20, 30, 40 data centers. Gotcha. Um, so you, you, there might be very specific regional reasons why you want to take advantage of a specific platform without all the headaches. And that's what Cloudways um, provides. Uh, we do have fantastic support. We do focus on, WordPress a lot and and we're innovating in a lot of the tools and technologies around that I think faster than a site ground. Does that matter for you today? You know, maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, if you're happy, I don't know what you're paying if you're happy and that's doing that and good. I, you know, <laughs> my job isn't to twist arms. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, uh, to get people to at least take a look at cloud ways to see if that's a better solution for them and, and then innovate, uh, faster and better than any other hosting company. Well, that's a good answer. I was just kind of curious. Yeah. And I, I found that everyone I've talked to in the hosting world is just like the WordPress world. We all, I like this term called coopetition. We're all competitors, but we're all friends too. Like every, like one of my, uh, one of my closest colleagues now is, uh, Chris, the founder of uh, lifter LMS. And I Chris actually Badger. use Le yeah. yeah, Chris Badger. He's awesome. Love Chris. Um, he, I actually use Learn Dash. I have since I started my courses. Uh, but I, that's another, I always, that's another Chris, right? It's a, yeah, it's another Chris now. Yeah, there was a previous owner who sold it, and then now there's another Chris. Um, but we talk about that often, and he's friends with those guys too. Like, there's a great spirit of cooperation in in the the WordPress and web design realm. But yeah, I was just I just wanted to to get your thoughts on you know some of the differences, and I'm sure we'll I want to wrap up by talking a little more about what you foresee and what you guys are doing. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity though to ask you as a professional in this industry. If I were, because I definitely am going to rename my cPanel course, what should I call it? It's basically a beginner's guide to all this stuff, the basic of domains and security and file manager for WordPress. It is WordPress related, but what would you call it? If I, if you would give me some ideas, um, what do you think? Because I'm really just, I just have no idea what to rename this course because it's not just cPanel um, and cPanel is on its way out in a lot of cases. Uh, I'm just having a dandy of a time, man, trying to figure out what I want to rename this course. I mean, it, it's, it's, boy, you could go like with like a really fun, like ugly title, like um, ugly is going to be in the word. So, you know, the ugly parts of your uh, website, uh, you know, underneath, you know, under the hood, um, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's that kind of stuff that you're not necessarily thinking about. And, and frankly, uh, you know, as the hosting industry matures hour by hour, um, you'll care less. I am not a car guy. I, this is my, my favorite. My wife can, can do anything with a car. She, you know, she can change the oil. She can do, uh, I have no idea. I have one very important thing for my car. Did it turn on? <laughs> same that, here that's all i need to know that's literally yeah, that's great it's on i can go done now there's fun stuff like okay oh does it have car place so i can put my phone on at the end of the day i don't care i just need it to go <laughs> yeah and you know one of our cars is over 20 years old you know why we keep it because it still goes and so you know in a lot of ways to your uh, initial hosting question if your website still goes and it's satisfying those requirements that's great if you have uh, seasonality in your website, you need to be able to scale up and down in weird ways. Does your hosting provider provide you know mm. have that in its yeah. infrastructure? Do you know? Do you have to deal with you know customers in regions that are not your traditional local region? You know, those are the questions that you want to start thinking about and asking. You know, are those real needs? Have you even looked at into those as needs? Are you missing on our opportunities because you're tied to a more traditional host? Gotcha. And uh, you gave me a good idea with the course question under the hood. I like that. I like that idea a lot because that is kind of what it is. It's like, what's under the, what's the foundation of the website? What's behind, you know, what's under it? What's behind, what's under the hood? That's a great idea. Yeah. Cause I'm just trying to think of what I could possibly call that to articulate all these little aspects of it. So I appreciate that, Robert. That's great. That gives me a good option to throw in the mix to, to see if that resonates. Um, and then, oh, yeah, as on. we, 
Copyright oh, Robert Jacoby licensing will have to go through. Uh... <laughs> I'll give you 10%. I'll give you 10% the first wave. <laughs> um, no, this is great. And I was kind of, yeah, I do want to talk about the trends here as we wrap up here moving forward and what you're seeing with you know, innovation and what, where you think hosting is going to go. Before we get to that, though, where would you like everyone to go? Um, do you have a special link or uh, a service that you'd like uh, everyone listening and watching to go to or just go to Cloudways? Where would you like everyone to go? You know, just hit the, you know, obviously just going to Cloudways is w- one of the easier routes. Um, you can also uh, sort of hit the Cloudways. Uh, let me just make sure that I. I should memorize some of these URLs to make my life easier. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, really, since it's a WordPress audience, cloudways.com slash WordPress. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll have that linked in the show notes. And then you have a personal blog as well that is um, pretty value-packed, it looks like. It's, is it just robertjacoby.com? Yep, yep. And uh, it took a little hiatus at the end of uh, – or second half of last year uh, just because I started working at Cloudways in April and boy, mm. did I not have time to keep up to date on that, but uh, let's get <laughs> back in the groove and uh, it, I'm actually looking forward to some of the content that's planned to be released as, as well as uh, as a slight redesign, really a re-architecture of it. Um, okay. Way too many plugins on this version of the WordPress site. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Now, so let's wrap this up with where do you think, where do you think hosting is going to go over maybe the next like five years? Um, do you foresee just more innovation with the, the DIYers and folks like me who just want to know the kind of like you with the car and say, I'm the same way with the car. I just want to make sure it runs. I want to have a decent amount of cup holders and I want to make sure my phone integrates with it. And that's, those are my three biggies. Uh, so like, is that kind of where you see hosting going? What, what do you think about that for the next five years or so? So what's, what's the uh, great quote? Uh, we, uh, underestimate short-term future and overestimate long-term future. Uh, Mm. I think there's going to be a boat ton of software innovation on the, in the short term and, and everything from, you know, again, abstracting the details even more so from what you're getting, um, you know, even at, at cloud always, we still talk about Ram and CPU and all that, but finding out, ways to make that knowledge more friendly, uh, the performance more valuable, uh, and, um, more relevant in human terms. Mm. Um, yes, there are plenty of geeks who understand all that stuff, but th- that's not what we really care about. You know, I, I care about how fast I can go from zero to 60. I don't care whether it's diesel traditional or diesel unleaded or electric. Right. I mean, you know, if I, if I want to go fast, I want to know that I can do that in two seconds versus 10 seconds. And I, and I may not care about what's, you know, let, let's ignore all the, uh, ecology eco, uh, stuff around that, but, uh, environmental stuff around, but, uh, you know, in that sense, you know, how do we keep, continue to abstract that, make that meaningful, uh, and valuable, uh, with software, the software is going to drive all this, uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're commoditized at the hardware level across all these platforms, you know, even your, your, data center in your closet is going to have the same great equipment that, you know, Google or Amazon or DigitalOcean has. So, you know, how do we make that experience of accessing that hardware valuable, useful? Um, You know, there there are going to be sets of tools and software that target specific verticals. You know, if if you're a financial services company, you're going to want to have, you know, maybe more high frequency access to such and such databases and whatnot. And you see yeah. companies like Vulture, um, who's part of our pool of resources, you know, looking to do more lag free kind of things. So, mm. and, and then how, how do you get software to take advantage of that? Um, you know, how do you make, sh- you know, how, how, how do you uh, have more dynamic, dy- dynamic scalability so that I don't necessarily have to think about the fact that Black Friday is coming in and I should kind of like bump up my services. Mm, um, yeah. And, oh, wait, it's not just Black Friday in North America. It's, uh, oh, what's that day in um, China? 
I know Japan has one, and then China. You know, there, there's these days that many countries have that are just like super shopping days. And how do you take advantage mm-hmm. of that? And how do you automatically, you know, scale up your Asian servers versus your North American servers? Um, you know, those kinds of things that people are just going to want to have happen automatically. Um, yeah. And you know, people will pay for them, and but all the stuff keeps getting commoditized. It's software. It's fast. You have to continue innovating. How do we make the WordPress experience better? Uh, you know, how do we make sure that maintenance and backups is just something you don't think about? Um, do you have consultative services at the hosting company to find performance uh, gaps within your applications? You know, mm. again, offload. Let creatives be creatives. You know, build the best websites you can. You know, fill it with as much awesome media. Um, let the, let the aspects of, you know, running the car, uh, you know, fixing, you know, changing the oil, fixing the engine, blah, 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 whatever car people do, um, <laughs> spark plugs, do those still exist? I don't know. Um, oh yeah. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> uh, sure. But, you know, offload the stuff that you're not good at and, yeah. you know, get, more value from the stuff you're really good at. I mean, that's just what we do. I'm not running a coal power plant to, you know, turn the lights on in my house because there's someone who can do that better. Yeah. So a couple of last questions here. Um, for somebody who is a freelancer who's got, say, 10 web design clients and they're hosting all of them, if they were to go to Cloudways, what would you recommend? What would you suggest for them? Would they go with the, like, I know you've got quite a few different tiers. Obviously, you can choose. And actually, maybe a two-part question since I'm hitting you with, like, two or three questions at a time. Um, do you recommend DigitalOcean versus Linode or AWS in certain situations? How do you know what data center to choose from when you're choosing your plans? Uh, I just, this is great. Uh, of course, this will come out in the future, but I, uh, I was just speaking to this topic at Groundhog Day. Uh, at Groundhog with two Gs is a WordPress uh, CRM plugin. And the topic was, you know, the questions you need to ask about hosting. You know, you know, know your customers. I mean, are, the, are there, re, you know, one of the easy things is, are they, you know, regionally constrained? Mm. Um, you know, are, are, are they smaller businesses on the West Coast or East Coast in Europe or in Asia? Well, then you're going to want to make sure that you can find the service that can support that locally because that will incru- uh, increase performance, which increases Google juice um, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, some of these platforms are just have different ge- uh, geographies that can uh, be more successful for your customers. You know, I recommend, you know, the, one of the great things about Cloudways is, hey, you know, the twelve, twenty, fifty dollar digital ocean account, throw everything on there, see what that performance is looking at like. And you can easily migrate single applications or multiple applications off to different VPSs, or if you just want everything on the same stack because you have some kind of shared code and resources, mm. you can just move up to a different box. I mean that's that's the beauty of not being specifically locked into AWS or Google Cloud is that, you know, we really have a lot of flexibility in how to uh, move your sites around. Gotcha. Because I mean, Amazon and Google Cloud, those plans are significantly more than DigitalOcean. Is that just what? Why is that per se? That's just the hardware specifications. I mean, that's you know, as we slowly try to abstract that out, we're still telling you what you get. So you know, you're getting gotcha. you know different types of CPUs with you know faster clock cycles. Uh, you know, all uh, um, SSD drives. So file access is you know. More uh, is quicker. Um, well, I got CPUs. Oh, and RAM. So yeah. How much, you know, how much and f- for 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 the layman on even those terms, is that more about s- amount of site traffic? Even like if you have a, an e-com, obviously if you have an e-commerce store, like you said, sales. You have to be aware of when you're going to get sales periods and uh, when you're going to do launches. I mean, those are all things where. Do you guys consult, like if somebody is curious about, well, if they don't even know what RAM is or how much bandwidth they would need, do they just let you know kind of where traffic is on average? And then you kind of let them know where they should go as far as what tier? We we, we typically appeal to a, a slightly geekier set at the moment. Yeah. So the folks generally have an idea of what that means. And, and gotcha. yeah, so we're trying to abstract that out. You know, one good rule of thumb is how much user generated content is coming in. Because mm. if, if, if you know, if you're, you have a static site, that's just sort of, when I say static, I'll even be a little flexible with that. You know, 
say it's a static site, but uh, is connected up to PayPal for actual you know purchasing of something. <laughs> well, for all intents and purposes, that's a static site. Yeah, you know, you're not going to need to worry about uh, all the CPU and RAM utilization as much because you're not really hitting your database as much. Mm. Uh, you know, we have we have caching at Cloudways and a CDN at Cloudways that will offload a lot of that work anyway. So that's why you can actually start out on a much lower server. Gotcha. Um, because a lot of that's going to be cached out and CDN'd out anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're running, you know, like Lifter and uh, Groundhog or some very database intensive application. Yeah, you're going to need uh, more RAM and CPU just to handle all the processing of the data that goes back and forth internally to the application and depending on utilization. Gotcha. So and what about, what about, I would view like my site as kind of maybe an interme- intermediary, excuse me, if I could talk today, intermediary, um, post a lot of blogs, course pages, a lot of different post types, a lot of comments, got like 500 comments I need to deal with and clear right now. I <laughs> go through and approve or spam. Uh, except, except the last <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, is that kind of a, I know there's way, you know, there's a lot of different tiers, but is that where I would just, you know, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Like when, how to know what, what to choose. I would view, I would think I would be probably on like the middle tier or maybe like a $50 a month or 96, depending on, you know, what data center is that, Kind of how you base I, is that what you would advise yeah. I base it off of? I, I bet you could start at fifty, and and you know that may be overperforming for you because yeah, you know, the, we make sure our WordPress is hyper um, tweaked to the platforms as well. So mm. we're doing optimization uh, on how the databases are spun up and how the web server uh, actually works with WordPress. So that's gotcha. an important factor as well. Um, but yeah, you're offloading a ton of content to YouTube and cdn so that's you know not a big issue um you have five com- hundred comments in the background how you know is that over the course of you know five minutes or over the course of five days those are just the ones i have not those are just the ones that are sitting that i either need to approve deny or spam uh, i'm actually about to get one of my uh probably have my va uh so cam get ready my va is like oh no josh is gonna have me do the comments uh i need some help with that but uh i get probably Comments wise, I'd say I probably get a dozen a week on average, maybe so, two, two or three a day. So that's like no database work, really. Okay. Most of your stuff is static. You have minimal com- uh, yeah. comments. Um, and that's actually, I'm going to make sure the audience knows that has nothing to do with Josh's uh, website or anything. No, I it's well, it's, it's by. I, I, I think people are moving off the idea of comments in general. Heck, uh, my ad blockers prevent seeing comments because i just don't care most of the oh time. oh my gosh we have content. yeah we're using uh, clean talk right now i mean the amount of spam that is currently being blocked is insane and and i should say too that's kind of by design um w- because i so i have a facebook group for i use the divi theme um i have a facebook group that's a support group for Divi. So a lot of questions funnel there for Divi specific stuff. I have a student center for all my web design students that is on circle, which is outside of my WordPress site. I don't have comments on my course pages. I have a membership that I coach people on that's in circle as well. So it's not on my WordPress site. So um, my WordPress site is essentially just my, my hub, but all the videos are on YouTube or on Vimeo, depending if they're public or private. So it's a good point. I guess I, I honestly sometimes think that there's probably way more going on my site than there actually is because it is the, everything's kind of pointed from there and it kicks out elsewhere. So it actually, it's a, it's an interesting distinction as far as what my site is actually doing. Cause there's, there's not as much user generated content as I thought. And, and that's the, and that's the big factor. I mean, that's where that, you know, that's where you start really thinking about, you know, what should my infrastructure be ready to support? But yeah, your site's not much different than mine. Uh, well, except you, your site has, I'm not talking about my personal site, but you probably have a <laughs> hundred, hundred uh, thousand X more people visiting. Um, <laughs> so that's the difference, but it's, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you'll be surprised at how much good caching can, uh, you know, uh, speed up your your site, and you, you don't yeah. really have to. You don't have to be spending a thousand dollars a month on a host. You really can be spending twenty to fifty dollars a month and just take advantage of good caching and CDNs. That probably and, uh, makes like. I mean, again, YouTube. Yeah, that, that's that's in my head. That's free video hosting somewhere else, and you don't have to worry about any of that infrastructure. 
Yeah, no, that's exactly why I post all my videos on YouTube and then just embed them yeah. uh, on my post type. So, um, yeah, you've actually made me feel a lot better. It also explains why I probably have been with the same plan. I upgraded on site ground three years ago, maybe like 18 or 19, uh, when I started doing courses, but that explains why I haven't had any issues or even though my traffic has gone up, um, I haven't had any sort of issues with downtime or any, um, any sort of like CPU issues or storage issues or anything like that, just because of what my site is actually, um, you know, putting out there. So that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, that, gosh, this has made me feel better, Robert, all around. I really thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to, to fill us in on all this. I really has. I mean, we've, we got a little, little nerdy on some of this stuff, but for anyone who found it boring it, again, I just want to reiterate that point. It is super important. I mean, everything we're doing online is on top of your hosting. So you, this is so important, at least to understand the basics of it and, and be real, well represented. So yeah, I love what you're up to, man. Love what you're up to with Cloudways. Thanks so much for sharing your knowledge. Uh, any parting thoughts or, or final thoughts as we wrap this up here, man? Well, sure. Check out cloudways.com, but also I, I can't wait to read, uh, you know, know what's under the hood. I love that term, man. I'm really excited about revamping that course. That's definitely going to be a front runner for the name of it. Uh, that's great. That was a great analogy. So that was worth it for me just talking with you just to get that idea. So thanks so much, man. I really enjoyed talking with you, Robert. Thanks for your time and uh, looking forward to keeping in touch. And And you guys are going to be at WordCamp in Europe. Is that right? We'll be at WordCamp Europe, WordCamp US, as many WordCamps as they allow the universe to have. Uh, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we've been cooped up for way too long so i know there's a lot of there's really a lot of pent-up energy to just be out there and 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 you know talk wordpress talk life uh in person so yeah. uh, we're looking forward to it yeah, I was talking with James Farmer, the CEO of uh, WPMU Dev, a couple months back, yep. and he we were joking about how word camps are going to be even more awkward than ever because everyone's been at home. Like web designers are awkward enough often, so uh, now everyone's you know working from home. It's going to be extra awkward meeting meeting in person. Although maybe it'll just be all that pent up energy that we're extra excited. Yeah, but see, that's not. I mean, you're talking to James. James doesn't actually get out that much. I mean, he's all the way in Australia, so he's not even yeah, right. He's not even at all these word camps. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was my comment. That was my comment. Yeah. Uh, no, that's good though, man. Well, awesome, Robert. Dude, thanks again for your time. This was really, uh, I have to be honest, I wasn't sure how the combo would go talking uh, hosting, but I really enjoyed this. This was fun, man. Thanks. Thanks for thanks your time. So much. Really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Talk soon. Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.